All right, good evening, everyone. Okay, Thank you very much for coming to this informational meeting. It's a public informational meeting. Um, and what we'd like to do is discuss a sidewalk project that we're putting up at the Lakewood Road. And again, this is a public meeting. We have a presentation. All right, again, so this is our public informational meeting. We're talking about the a project which we'll have at hand for Lathrop Road, the sidewalk project, and we welcome you all. Uh, this is a, uh, a project which we've been working on for a while. You might have seen an article in the newspaper about it. Um, it's some informational that has gone on already, but we'd like to readdress the issue now that we're going to go forward with it. Uh, what we'd like to do is introduce, uh, we have Mary Anjanati, who is our uh, town planner for this event, as well as Chuck. Yes. And uh, he'll give a demonstration with the uh, projector. You all have handouts. If you didn't get any, there's one in the back. And uh, this is to, going to help us to uh, uh, continue, continue the sidewalks from where it stops at in front of the eastern uh, savings bank. Go around the corner, uh, through the stoplights, under the underpass, another set of stoplights in front of the uh, current gas station, and eventually over across the street so you can get over to the big Y and then to uh, Amazon. So these are, are areas for safety. These are areas to allow people to continue to utilize uh, the services of the town um, by way of the sidewalk. And uh, we, we do appreciate your coming here. So at the end, if you have questions, we'd definitely like to um, have you ask the questions. So, Chuck, if you wouldn't mind. Sure. Uh, where, can everyone hear me okay? Is the mic picking me up if I talk this loud? Yeah? Okay, so I'm I'm Chuck Eaton. I'm the town engineer. I'll stand uh, I'll stand over here so everybody can see. So this is for the Lathrop Road sidewalk that we are looking at constructing. <clears throat> the the basic idea, like like Kevin just explained, is uh, you have the the bank right here. Uh, which is along with the rest of this commercial development here, uh, right here in 12. <clears throat> then you also have another commercial development in this area here, uh, as far as a you know, hotel, fast foods, I think there's another bank. Uh, there is the Big Y shopping plaza here, and then <clears throat> in the future, most likely this summer, uh, the Amazon distribution warehouse is going to be here, and then this is uh, Central Ford located here on the east side of Lakeford Road. So if you're not familiar, this is this is Lakeford Road right here. This is 395 here. And one thing you notice is that 395 provides these two uh, fairly good sized commercial areas. Can everybody hear me okay? So uh, if you've traveled this, which I'm sure you all have, you'll see that there have actually been areas worn in the grass where people are walking between these two commercial districts. Uh, it gets very, very dangerous with all of these road crossings here, especially underneath the bridge when you only have about a foot of road shoulder to walk in. Yeah, it feels pretty tricky. Right, I, right. I know. <laughs> uh, so that's, that kind of demonstrates the overall need, and then now with Amazon, constructing their warehouse here, it would, it would also provide uh, some foot traffic between these two commercial districts and you have a large employer down, down in this area to the south. So how, how is this getting paid for? <clears throat> the majority of this is being paid through lots of funding. It's administered through uh, DOT and NECOG. And Basically, what lots of pays for, lots of pays for the construction, and they pay for the construction inspection. So the town's portion of this is to pay for the design of the sidewalk. Uh, so <clears throat> cost-wise, the construction is approximated at about $750,000. The inspection is about $100,000, and then the design is about $100,000. So the town portion of that is about $100,000. And the project has not been designed yet. Uh, it's just been conceptually designed, which I'll walk you through the, the concept design. <clears throat> so if you have any input on anything you'd like to see, we can discuss that. Um, the anticipated schedule, <clears throat> the, the design, we're looking at having that done in April. 
have the project bid in May and then construction this summer and it will probably last from June to October, about uh, a typical summer construction season. And if you guys have any questions as I'm going through this, this is not a rigid presentation, so feel free to jump in and ask questions, that sort of thing. <clears throat> so the concept design, this is to the north. Uh, you have the bank located right here. There's an existing sidewalk in blue here. And then in the orangey-brown color, that is the proposed sidewalk. So if you can imagine walking from the existing sidewalk through underneath the bridge down to Big Y, there, there are no pedestrian facilities in through this, this section of Lather Road. And it's very, very dangerous. So we're proposing to put in a five foot wide concrete sidewalk across the first set of ramps to 395 and run underneath the bridge. <coughs> Uh, we are proposing lights underneath the bridge so that at night you'll have some safety measures. So here's the 395 bridge here. So we're, we're moving from north to south, so to speak. Yes? Before we go too much further, you're talking about having this completed this summer? Yes. It, 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 it will be done by the fall time and the construction That's what, that's what we're anticipating. Uh, you know, we do have to go through DOT review and this sort of thing. Um, so there are some unknowns in the schedule, but that's that's what we would anticipate. So it's not going to be a two-year project. It's going to be hopefully one year and done. Yes. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> so here's the 395 bridge. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, in this section here, you have the DOT commuter parking lot. Uh, the DOT commuter parking lot is not handicapped accessible. There are handicapped parking spaces there, but there is no way for uh, an accessible pathway from the commuter parking lot to any of the commercial areas. So as part of this project, we're proposing to put in a, an accessible sidewalk. Uh, this would be the second crosswalk which would cross Lathrop Road. The first one was at the, the first 395 off-ramp. <clears throat> these, these crosswalks would have uh, pedestrian push buttons that would be linked to the lights, so the lights would be timed uh, to give you time to get across the street as you're, as you're walking through there. Uh, so the commuter parking lot would be linked to the main sidewalk along Lathrop Road. We would cross the on-ramp to 395 northbound. This is the existing gas station. This is the parking lot to the motel. I think it's Quintus. Is that correct? Quintus Inn? That one's quality. Oh, this one's quality. Okay. But yeah. Quintus is across the street. Like okay. Rack. Okay, thank you. So as we move a little further south here, we have Pratt Road. We're going to have a, this is an unsignalized intersection at Pratt Road. So this would be. Uh, just a typical crosswalk, you do not have a pedestrian push button because there is no stoplight there. Uh, <clears throat> here, this is a fairly difficult area of design in that we have to get the, the sidewalk across this culvert. Uh, the culvert, although it looks really big, uh, it's actually quite narrow compared to the width of roadway that you have crossing it. So they're really, without extending the culvert out further in one direction or another, uh, you have to try and squeeze the sidewalk in here. What we are proposing is to reduce the width of the existing paved island that's in here. So what this island does is it helps control traffic as you have a, a through lane here at Pratt Road, and you also have a turn lane to go onto Pratt Road from Lathrop Road. And so this island is such that it keeps the, the through lane going through straight and the turn lane uh, providing a, a visual so that you know which lane to go in and that you can't continue to go straight here. So we're planning on reducing the width of the painted island here about five feet so that we can fit a five foot sidewalk in along the eastern side of this culvert. Uh, 
<clears throat> the sidewalk will continue up to the kind of the corner of the Central Ford uh, location, and then here we would have a crosswalk coming across to the big Y uh, entrance. Because this is such a long or wide crosswalk, you basically have to cross essentially four lanes of traffic. Uh, we're proposing to have what's called a rectangular rapid flashing beacon. So these are kind of like strobe lights so that when you push the pedestrian walk button, the strobe lights go off warning oncoming traffic that someone is crossing the street. Um, the nice thing about these is that they're, they're not like the regular alternating blinking yellow lights that you see in a lot of different places because those are always on. And <clears throat> over the years you get used to seeing those and there's really no changes or you, you don't necessarily see those and expect someone to be walking across the street. With the strobe lights, they only go on when someone pushes the pedestrian button and is looking across the street. So it's going to be something that's out of the ordinary that you're not used to seeing to bring your attention to pedestrians. <clears throat> this is the corner of the, there'll be a few months when they're, they're not necessarily interconnected, but uh, this gives you the idea of what this would look like and how they would connect. So these are some different details, uh, some draft details. Uh, I left these in mainly to show how we were proposing to run the sidewalk underneath the 395 bridge. <clears throat> what we're proposing to do is put the sidewalk somewhat elevated behind the, the piers or the columns of the bridge, such that we don't have to change, if, if these are the, the Lathrop Road lanes of traffic, here's the top of the bridge, here's the pier or the column of the bridge, so here's the shoulder of your road, which is very narrow, we would not be able to fit a sidewalk in at the road elevation and not lose a lane, narrow the lanes, something, something like that. So what we're proposing to do is put the sidewalk up behind the columns. Uh, we're hoping just to be able to grade this area out between the sidewalk and the abutment of the bridge. If we need to, we would put a small retaining wall in here. Because this grade, so if the abutment of the bridge is here, this grade really can't change because of frost protection for the, for the bridge footing and the bridge abutment. Chuck? Yes. The grade? On that side, yes, goes up to the top of the pylon. I mean, to the top of Jersey barriers between the pylons. Yes. So these are the. These it's are the, much higher than what you're showing. Yes. For this grade. Is not, this is not to scale. Okay. This is just to kind of give you an idea as to what, what we're proposing. Okay. So okay. Right, what, what, it, it's not to scale. This is it, this is probably a little higher than this. Um, you know, there would be. A no, I'm saying okay. Put put your cursor back on the pylon. Yep. On, on the left side of it, yes. there's Jersey barriers that go up from, yes. from the sidewalk level. Yes. Not, not from the road level. There's Jersey barriers. How high are those? I, would, I think they're about two and a half to three feet. And whatever's graded behind that comes up to the top of that through the pylons. That's, that's right. So the so sidewalk it, is going to be elevated at the top of those Jersey barriers. Right? Oh, so oh, yeah, okay. We would have, I'm we would following have you now. Fence on the back side of the columns to protect pedestrians from going into the travel lanes of Lathrop Road. <clears throat> and this is also where you know, this area would be lighted, the underpass would be lighted for security at night. Yeah, what you're talking about in proposing, have you seen this done at any place on what this type of design? Uh, no, 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 no. no but I talked to Killingly, the by the lows, yes. has an elevated yes. sidewalk. Yes. I don't know about the grading there. I think it's all concrete, maybe, but I, I'm not sure. Right, But right. they have elevated sidewalk. That's, that's right, that's right. Um, I think this would be a little bit different because I think it would be further away from the travel lanes. I think that one is pretty close to the travel lanes. And it's lane. high. It's yeah. a lot higher than what you're thinking. Yeah. Um, safety point of view. So, you know, the hope here is that we can really minimize any grading and if you if you drive through that area and look, you can almost see uh, a flat path there where people, 
people have been walking. Um, so we're, we're not really looking to change that at all. We're just looking to make it safe and um, handicap accessible. No. Yes. Before we just continue, would, would it be okay if, if when you at least give the first question, you put your name to oh. it so that we can keep record of it? Oh. Yes. Oh, yes. sure. Thank you. Well, we already introduced ourselves, but so. So, okay. well, <laughs> seeing as, as we're recording this, would, would you like to give your name for the record? Oh, oh sure. Oh, I understand. Yes. Oh, Stephen Keith. Okay. And I'm Mark Agney. I'm Sean Peters. Now I got one more question, yes. Sean Peterson. Um, the lights are closing. Who pays for those? The electricity? How are they built? Who are they built to? That is a really good question. I don't know yet. So is that going to be the? Is that going to be considered a street light? Is the fire department going to be picking up the tab on those? Sure. It's fine. So the other the other electricity uses are going to be the rapid reflectorized beacons for the yep. one crosswalk at the Big Y complex. <clears throat> and I was talking with Marianne about that tonight. You know, there's some different options as far as having a solar system versus one that's hardwired. And like I was saying, we still need to figure out who's going to be, whose meter is all this stuff going to be on. There's pros and cons to having a solar system. Um, but the other pedestrian crossings with the push buttons and that sort of thing, that would all be tied into the DOT uh, traffic light system. So that would all be part of DOT. And on that Pratt Road, how wide is that? I, I thought, so Pratt Road, I remember it, it seemed pretty wide. It's, it's pretty wide. Yeah. It's probably like a good 40 or 50 feet here. Yeah, it's a longer. Right. The nice thing about Pratt Road, though, is that you are at, you have a, a stop sign controlled intersection. Whereas at Big Y here, there are no stop signs. True. So, um, and like I was saying with the Painted Island, that is why we're showing the sidewalk on the east side of the culvert as opposed to having another crosswalk here or somewhere further north on Lathrop Road because we it's going to be very difficult to get a sidewalk on the west side of this culvert because of the lane configuration. And how are you going to how are you going to take five feet away of the travel lanes and still have all of the through traffic go smoothly and not have any um, significant tapers to the lanes? Interesting, perhaps uh, Stephen Keith. Um, People on Pratt Road, Industrial Park, and the in and places up there will be able to utilize uh, these sidewalks as well to go to Big White Plaza. So it's good to have advantages to that section. Yes. Uh, especially the, the Industrial Park as well. Sean Peterson, how much of this project does the state have to approve? The whole thing or just the sections where it's on state property? So. <clears throat> They have much more say and approval within the state right-of-way sections. Um, they do review the entire project through lots of the funding source. Um, but there will be quite a bit of design review where we're going underneath the bridge and within their right-of-way. Do you expect any problems from that? I mean, it's hard I, to say. But. I, I don't. I already spoke to DOT about this, specifically the bridge section of the sidewalk. And that's that's why I left that detail of the sidewalk underneath the bridge in here, because without a detail or a schematic or something, it's very difficult to explain to somebody what you want to do. And of course, the DOT folks were like, whoa, whoa. You can't change the grading around the bridge. You can't. You can't. And it's, we're not looking to do that. You know, it's it's a it's really a simple, pretty simple design. So, um, so that's the only part you're really expecting a possible problem with. I don't. I don't foresee any problems. I just think it it will be scrutinized a lot more than the rest of the project. Um, there is an area. Uh, if anyone is familiar with. 
the Amazon project. There is an area in here in front of the big Y complex. Uh, for some reason, when Lathrop Road was constructed, they, they built it to the west side of the right-of-way, such that this, this section of Lathrop Road in here is actually outside of the town right-of-way. <clears throat> so we would need to get an easement for this section of sidewalk here at Big Y because the road is so skewed to the west. And when the Amazon project was being permitted, one of the things that was done was that the, the town right-of-way was adjusted with the Amazon property line such that the roadway would, would be fully within the town right-of-way. Did I explain that okay? So, so you know, the, the right-of-way is actually out, you know, beyond the edge of pavement. It's out of here. One more, all right, getting right back to the bridge on yes. the elevation. On either side, is there enough for ADA compliance? So we, we, we just completed the survey, and I haven't had a chance to look at what the actual grades are. So what we did is when we put the estimated cost together, we, we anticipated having a short retaining wall in this area here to help us with the grades so that we can get, you know, obviously everything needs to be uh, accessible, handicap accessible. So in order to have that in through here, we are showing a short retaining wall on both sides of the bridge, so there and here. Uh, my hope is that we can grade it out and, and not have to have a retaining wall there. See, seeing the, oh, you know, the bird's eye view, I can see this side has more room than the other side even. Right, right. I didn't, I didn't realize that the other side was short. Yep. Like that. Yep. But I think, I think the grade is much worse over here. I think this is, mm. so this side, this side isn't as bad. Now isn't there a, a telephone pole right in the middle of the sidewalk? Will mm -hmm. that have to get moved out? How so, does that work out? <clears throat> Or are you going to go around the back side of it? I believe that the, we're, going to, we're going to be on the back side of that, I, I believe. Again, this hasn't been designed yet. This is just in the concept phase right now. So typically, I believe that that utility pole has a guy wire that comes down. And generally, what is done is a um, horizontal pole rod is attached to the utility pole to help extend the guy wire out over the side. That's not going to be an added expense, or will we miss it down the road? No, it's all part of the construction costs. So the the basic process is that as you go through the design, once you once you finish the design, everything gets gets reviewed by DOT. You have an updated cost estimate. So you know, right now we're saying seven hundred fifty thousand dollars is what we think the construction cost is going to be. Well, with COVID materials and increased costs and that sort of thing. We really don't know what the, the, the actual cost is. is. We don't have a, a, a good estimated cost based on full design. So once we get to that point, lots of understands that, and so their, their numbers to the town are going to be reflective of what the actual bid number is by the contract. Um, so. So if it increases, that's fine. Uh, lots of understands that. All right, Kevin, I've got two questions. One would be, if you go back to the next slide where you're actually showing the color area, I'll put forward. OK, um, right there. Yep. Now, I know there's a narrow area, and there's just about room for four lanes in that area. Yes. And you're proposing to take some of that island by me? Yes. Is there an opportunity to have those, um, uh, what do they call them, reflectors that actually are dividers, but they, uh, they bend in, in the move if there's traffic coming on? Is there a possibility to have those in that um, middle lane with the uh, island area? That's a, that's a good question. Possibly. I don't know. I, I would have to check on that. I think 
I don't know what the snow plowing situation is with that. And, um, I, I would have to look into that. We okay. can, and we can coordinate that with, you know, if we're working on the design. All right. And then when you finally come to the approved uh, design with DOT, this is something we'll be sharing with Amazon so we can get that final piece connected properly? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And what we'll do is, in the contract documents, we'll actually say that, you know, the the contractor that the town publicly bids and hires, they're going to be required to coordinate with the Amazon group and their contractor so that if something needs to be adjusted a few inches in the field or whatever it is, if everyone's going to work together to have a finished product. You know, we're not going to have the, the railroad tracks where, you know, one rail meets yes. but the other rails are offset. And then the next slide over, one more, one more question, I guess, is when you're right there at, with a new meet that is also aware of water and sewer. And I, so we do have to uh, be careful about that when we're putting our sidewalk up so we know we can still access. That's right. So if you have manholes or water valves or anything like that, there will be provisions to have those uh, covers raised to grave and um, so that the access gets maintained. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much for that. Sure, you're welcome. I have one for the first selection. Yeah. Who's the responsible for the maintenance? Snow removal. Well, who is responsible for the road maintenance now? Who would be taking care of the Can I go to the town? Because well, that's a big problem, removing snow from the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. Because if you had noticed the last couple weeks, it was the sidewalk was not cleared in front. Advanced Auto, McDonald's, CBS, East Gen Bank, none of that is done. So is there a mechanism or are you going to create a mechanism to make them responsible for those sidewalks? We have an no ordinance, don't we? But there's no tweak the ordinance. Yeah, we're, we'll be talking about that soon. Especially so something we review on a regular basis with ordinances. It's been going on for years, like several years. This has been a discussion and there's no tweak to it. It should have been addressed when we did the ordinances last time. Well, when the ordinance has been last time, there's a lot of re redo. So we, we as a selectman are responsible to review ordinances annually, and we'll be doing that. Okay. It's been discussed several times about what's going to happen with it. I mean, it was great to see the residents that looked along there. They cleared their sidewalks nice, but the businesses didn't. Can I ask one question? Because somebody asked it online. We put this out. Uh, that spot in front of Turning Heads, that little piece of sidewalk that's missing over the brook, is there any chance it's going to get taken care of? Because you get to Turning Heads and you oh, have to go out into the, the road. Right there? Yeah. yeah. It's I just missing a piece of sidewalk. It's not there. part of this project? No. We but, look at it. Yeah. Well, we're on sidewalks, I figured. <laughs> Bring it up. Something engineering. <laughs> and we're looking for a state crosswalk to get over there. Just a. We'll talk about that after. I was thinking about asking Marianne. I, I actually, when that project, that sidewalk project came out to for engineering, I remember going to that meeting, and there was supposed to be a bridge over that. And I don't know. I didn't end up working on the job, but. I don't know if they ran out of money or, or what happened, but I always thought that was funny that. So now, it, it needs to. If you go back to when Mr. Sweet was in office, they took the sidewalk out of Central Village. There was mention of that. I mean, they took that bridge out of Central Village, you know, the old aluminum one. And it was talked about adjusting that one to fit that span. Is that still around or did that get scrapped? I don't know. 
that the highway department should be up there if it's still in existence. I thought they'd saved it for that purpose. It was discussed several times, so I thought all I had was working on adjusting it and never went anywhere. Because then we had changes in selection. You know what's pretty good talking about here? You know where the, oh, the laundry mat is? Yes. A sharp corner, there used to be a bridge there, a little bridge. Okay. That one got taken out when they redid that corner. Supposedly got saved, and it was supposed to be refitted to go there. Check tomorrow with my Definitely thank you for coming to the uh, meeting. You definitely have an opportunity to follow us up. You can send messages to myself and Marianne. Um, and I'm sure there'll be something that you'll say, I, I should have asked the question or have a concern. So don't feel like you can't. Uh, definitely give us a, a heads up and ask the questions. All right. With that, thank you very much and have a great night. Thank you. Thank you.